Peace and love, black family. Peace and love. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism, International Ifa Tunde, King Kong Consciousness, the most requested black scholar on the face of the earth, 10 years straight, nobody comes close. The most significant black intellectual of the 21st century, one of the greatest orators of the modern age, the greatest black school psychologist in American history. I am Dr. Umar Johnson. This is my first live stream in over a year. Other than my black parent teleconferences, this has been my first live stream in almost two years. That is because we have acquired the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy buildings two schools, four buildings, and I want to say thank you to every brother and sister. I want to say thank you to every brother and sister who helped us by donating to the FDMG fund to purchase that four building campus in Wilmington, Delaware, but the time is not to stop. We must push forward. We must push forward and we must keep on going. We are not done. We are halfway there, but we have not completed the journey. As black people, we have a bad habit of starting, but not finishing. As Africans, we have a bad habit of starting, but not finishing. We must finish the job. Continue to donate your checks and money orders payable to the FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634, P.O. Box 9634, P.O. Box. 9634 Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. Send them in. If you used to send 20, send 40. If you used to send 100, send 200. If you used to send 500, send 1,000. We need a million dollars to renovate the campus. I want it done by next spring so we can celebrate the centennial. I want it done by next spring so we can celebrate the centennial of the red black and green flag the red black and green Marcus Scarvey flag turns 100 years old August of 2020 let's get ready with a massive celebration on the grounds your grounds our grounds of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Scarvey Academy we need a million dollars we need a million but if we get half a million, we can finish half the campus. If we get a quarter million, we can finish at least the Marcus Garvey building. The Frederick Douglass building is the ultimate goal, but we can start off with the Marcus Garvey building. Send in your donations. Let's get this done. I'm the only institution builder in the modern conscious movement. Let's get this done. The first school of its kind. Let's get it done. A true revolutionary pan-African nationalist academy where Garveyism is a curriculum. Where African redemption is a curriculum. Where African spirituality is a curriculum. This ain't Dashiki's Drums in Black History Month. We're talking about the psychological reconstruction of African people. Send the donations in. Stop playing games. Please share the fundraiser information on your page. Stop playing games. Some of you claim to be supporters, but you've never since shared the FDMG donation information a single time on your page. I said some of you claim to be supporters with your fake asses and you have never shared the donation information a single time. Don't call yourself unapologetically African. Don't call yourself African family first. Don't say you're a Dr. Umar supporter and you have never shared the FDMG mail in check a money order don't. How difficult is it to put FDMG Academy P.O. Box 9634 Wilmington, Delaware 19809. You not no supporter. It's never been on your Twitter. It's never been on your Instagram. How many cousins have you texted to? How many relatives have you sent that information to? But let me digress. I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. The city that murdered Dr. King. I said I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. 
the city that murdered Dr. King? Or should I say the city in which the FBI and CIA murdered Dr. King? Because we know the brothers and sisters here in Memphis, they get down for the get down. They real here. They official here. The street organizers are real in Memphis. In fact, Memphis might be the best example of courageous, black, conscious activism we have in the country. They don't let police genocides go down out here without reprisals. You don't mistreat Africans out here without reprisals. Yeah, they got violence. Yeah, they got drug dealing, just like we got in Philly, just like you got in New York, just like you got in Houston, just like you got in L.A., Detroit, Chicago, Milwaukee, Raleigh, Charlotte, and the list goes on. They got their problems like the rest of us. I'm simply saying that in Memphis, Tennessee, I see a little bit more street activism than I see in a lot of other places. I'm only saying that in Memphis, Tennessee, I see a little bit more street activism here than I see in a lot of other places. Today is the Do For Self Survival Conference. Knoxville, where you at? Chattanooga, where you at? Nashville, where you at? Today is the Do For Self Survival Conference at the Martin Luther King Center on Bill Street. The Martin Luther King Center on Bill Street. 11.30 to 7, the keynote by the Prince of Pan-Africanism is 5. Come on out and learn how to prepare your home, prepare your family for disasters. Natural or political. Come on out and learn that. How to clean your water. How to dispose of human waste. How to prepare and safeguard your food. How to protect your family. That's what's going down today. The most important event today is the Do For Self Survival Conference. You can't name something more important going down in these black United States than what's going down today on Bill Street here in Memphis. The Do For Self Survival Conference. 11 to 7. King Kong Consciousness will take the stage at 5. 11 to 7, 485 Bill Street, right here in Memphis. King Kong Consciousness will keynote at 5. Why did I decide to do a live stream? I haven't done a live stream since I announced FDMG. I haven't done a live stream since I announced the FDMG back in February. Why did I have to go live today? I was going to do a black parent teleconference and something said, hold on. I was going to do the black parent teleconference and something said, hold on. Something said, hold on. Something said, you're going to have to address this Amber Geiger situation. Something said, hold on. You're going to have to address this Amber Geiger situation. Something said, hold on, you're going to have to address this Amber Geiger situation. We all seen it. We saw what happened. A privileged white female walked into the home of an unarmed black male. Claiming she did not know it was not her apartment. But there were eyewitnesses who said they heard her banging on the door, demanding him to open it. There's also speculation that they did know each other on a more personal level. But that's just speculation. The facts are people heard her banging on the door, demanding him to open it. She kills this young brother in his own home. Premeditated assassination. Premeditated assassination. And her number one defense was not her attorney. Her number one de defense was not the crooked Dallas Police Department. That wasn't her number one defense. Her number one defense wasn't her family. It wasn't her friends. Her number one defense in the whole trial was the black people in the courtroom. I said her number one defense was not Dallas police. Order of police. It was not 
her attorneys. It was not her friends or family. Amber Geiger's number one defense was the black people in the courtroom. In other words, the people who should have been most predisposed towards seeing this woman convicted and put under the jail. A sibling of the victim and the presiding judge. A sibling of the victim and a presiding judge. Two people who you would have thought were the most invested into seeing justice be done. Displayed more compassion for this woman than her own attorney. Showed more compassion for this woman than the community. In fact, the white prosecutors, the white prosecutors, the state's attorneys showed more strength in conviction than the brother's family and the presiding judge who were black. And then y'all get mad at Dr. Umar. And then y'all get mad at the Prince of Pan-Africanism. And then y'all get mad at King Kong Consciousness for telling you every speech, every lecture, every seminar, every interview that black people have a psychopathological love affair with white folks. It is worse than any episode of domestic violence I have ever seen in my life. The, the, the domestic abuse that white America has done to black America exceeds the domestic abuse ever wreaked upon the people by their oppressor. And yet and still, 400 years later, yet and still, 400 years later, you are still in this psychopathological love affair with the very same people who want to exterminate you. And you wonder why the world does not care about you. And you wonder why the world does not respect you. How can you respect the people? How can you respect a people who loses one of their own? A young, strong brother, he wasn't on the corner selling dope. He wasn't robbing cars. He wasn't stealing from nobody. He wasn't taking nobody's life. This brother was college educated, decent job, promising future, and he gets his life taken by the privileged white female. He gets his life taken unprovoked by the privileged white female. The same type of privileged white female that you Negroes love turning into your wives. The same type of privileged white female that you coon ass Negroes love bringing home to your mommy. The same type of privileged white female that black men can't seem to get enough of. See? See, and then we have made it clear this is not just about the judge. She's my sister. I love her, but her behavior was dysfunctional. This is not just about John's brother. He was a young brother, traumatized, grieving the death of his brother. This is not about him. They were merely symptoms of the problem. They're not the problem. We are the did in that courtroom is symptomatic of how the collective consciousness of the Negro psyche operates. Don't make this about them. This ain't about those individuals. It's about us as a people. We've been operating under this consciousness for 400 years. They're just symptoms of the problem. They're not the problem. The problem is the people. They're just symptoms of the problem. They are not the problem. The problem is we, the people. The problem is we, the people. But let's get into this now. We, we, we want to forgive killers in courtrooms now. 
We want to forgive killers inside of court. Since when did we get so thirsty for white approval? Since when did we get so thirsty for white validation? Since when did we get so thirsty for white acceptance that now we are forgiven killers in the courtroom? Shout out to Trayvon Martin's mother who said she don't think she could ever forgive George Zimmerman. Shout out to Trayvon Martin's mother who said she don't think she could ever forgive George Zimmerman. Shout out to Trayvon Martin's mother who said she don't think she could ever forgive George Zimmerman. A super shout out to Michael Brown's mother who said she will never forgive the cop who killed her son. Shout out to Michael Brown's mother. Shout out to Michael Brown's mother. St. Louis, I will see you in the spring. Facts. St. Louis, I will see you in the spring. Shout out to Michael Brown's mother who said she ain't never forgiven Officer Darren Wilson. She said I'm never forgiven Officer Darren Wilson. And then we got Negroes who want to invoke the Bible. They want to invoke the Bible and they want to say that our Lord and Savior, who was not around when the African slave trade started, our Lord and Savior, he was not around during Willie Lynch, our Lord and Savior. He was not around during Jim Crow, our Lord and Savior. He was not around for a hundred years of lynching from 1865 to 1965, our Lord and Savior. He didn't have to live through the racism of Ronald Reagan, our Lord and Savior. He didn't have to live through the racism of a Lyndon Baines Johnson, our Lord and Savior. He didn't have to deal with the Bill Clinton crime bill, our Lord and Savior. He didn't have to live with Barack Obama's betrayal of black folks, our Lord and Savior. He doesn't live under George Bush's America, but you want to invoke a 2,000 year old religion to deal with a 21st century problem. I said you want to evoke a 2,000 year old religion to deal with the 21st century problem. Me thinks not. Me thinks not. Me thinks not. Listen to me. I have no problem with your Christianity. The most honorable, the most honorable, the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey was a Christian. I don't have a problem with that. I am a descendant of Christians. I don't have a problem with that. My great grand uncle, Bishop Alexander Wayman, was the seventh bishop under Richard Allen in the AME church. I don't have a problem with religion. But back then, that was a different type of a pastor. He was a stand up and fight back pastor. Now we have a soft ass, anything goes, black religious leadership. And that's why we suffer. I said we have a soft ass, anything goes, black religious leadership. And that's why we suffer. Forgiving killers in the courtroom. Forgiving killers in the courtroom in her number one tactic. Amber Geiger's number one tactic was the sympathy of Negroes. She walked into the trial. You can see it from the first day. Soon as she took the stand, what did she begin to do? Before she answered a single question, what did Amber Geiger begin to do the minute she sat down? She said, before I answer any questions. Because I've already told two stories. Before I answer any questions, I've already been caught in too many lies. Before I answer any questions, because they're going to expose me for the fact that I did this on purpose. Before I answer any questions, I'm going to evoke sympathy from my Negro servants. I'm going to evoke sympathy from my Negro servants because I know how much black men love white girls. I know how much black men love white girls. I know how much black men love white girls. And I know how much black women want to look like us. And I know how much black women want to look like us. I mean, after all, black women spend $20 billion a year trying to look like me, Amber Geiger. See, black women, Amber Geiger. 
is the phenotypical standard that you aspire to be. You want that long blonde hair. Long blonde hair. You want those blue eyes, those green eyes. You want to lighten your skin up. You want to be the killer Amber Geiger. And you spend $20 billion a year trying to make yourself into Amber Geiger. I don't give a damn who don't like what I said. I don't give a damn who don't like what I said. And any black man who got a black woman running around with blonde hair on her head, Negro use a coon too. I said any black man who letting his black woman run around with blonde hair on her head, use a coon too. The hell wrong with y'all. I'm going to tolerate the perms. Until she raises her consciousness. I'm going to tolerate the weave until she raises her consciousness. She ain't coming to my school with that. She ain't coming to my school with that. But I'll tolerate that on the community level. I'll tolerate the perm. I'll tolerate the weave. I'm not tolerating blonde hair. Ain't no black woman with no chocolate skin got any business running around. With blonde hair on her head. You want to look like Amber Geiger. So Amber Geiger said, listen. Black folks love us. They love us. They forgave us for slavery. They forgave us for Jim Crow. They forgave us for Willie Lynch. They forgave us for the police killings. I'm a white girl. If they forgive white males, if they forgive white males, imagine what they'll do for me. But I'm going to have to evoke some sympathy. I'm going to have to turn on the Willie Lynch chip. I'm going to have to turn on the Willie Lynch chip in these Negroes in this courtroom. And soon when she sat down. Soon when she sat down, she started not just tearing. She wasn't just tearing. Amber Geiger began to wail and cry out loud like a three-year-old having a temper tantrum. Amber Geiger began to cry and sob and whine and she put on this whole theatrical display and she started hypnotizing these Negroes with white hoodoo. Not African voodoo. I said white hoodoo. Amber Geiger put on her white hoodoo robe and she started hypnotizing Negroes in the courtroom. And by doing her white hoodoo in the courtroom, she activated the Willie Lynch chip of the judge. She activated the Willie Lynch chip of the jury. She activated the Willie Lynch chip of the family. Don't say I'm better than the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Don't say that I'm better than the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, my brother. He's an elder. 50, 60 years in the struggle. He has my respect. And before there was me, there was he. Pay respect to those who come before you. Whether you agree with them in totality is irrelevant. Whether I agree with him in totality is irrelevant. Don't compare me to him. It is disrespectful to do so. Never compare me to the ancestors. I can't feel those shoes. I might get a pair of shoes right next to theirs one day, but I can't feel those shoes. I might get a pair of shoes right next to theirs one day, but I can't feel those shoes. Let's keep everything in context. Now, getting back to this, I want y'all to stay with me here. I'm not going to keep you too long. Memphis, 5 o'clock, Bill Street, MLK, today, the Prince is going off. I think I got a classic lecture coming out of me today in Memphis. I think I got a classic one coming out in Memphis today. So she evoked the sympathy and compassion of the Negroes in the courtroom by crying. Somebody told Amber Geiger. You can do a better job defending yourself than your lawyer ever could. Somebody told Amber Geiger, you can do a better job defending yourself than your attorneys ever could do. I bet you her preacher called her up and she, she said, Amber, listen, you're not going to win this 
through legal debate and argument because you're guilty. Nobody with common sense is going to think that you parked the car on the wrong floor, walked through the hall of the wrong floor, got to a house, your key don't even fit the door, and then there's a doormat down below. There's numbers on everybody's door. Unless you are blind, Amber, unless you are blind, Amber, there is no way you're going to walk out that courtroom acquitted. Nobody with common sense. Nobody with common sense will find you possibly innocent beyond a reasonable doubt. The legal argument won't save you, Amber, because what you did is indefensible. You can't use the law. I know you paid a lot of money for these attorneys. I know the Dallas Police Department paid for the attorneys that got you the best attorney that they could find. But you're not going to win this because this is so blatantly ridiculous. Only a blind person could use your argument, Amber. But there is one thing you could do. There is one thing you can do. We have seen it done over and over again. You have to appeal to the love that Negroes have for their oppressors. Amber, you have to appeal to the love that Negroes have for their oppressors. Amber, the only way you're going to win this case is you have to go beyond the prosecution. You have to go beyond the defense. You have to go beyond the legal protocol. And you have to appeal to the emotions of Negroes who love their oppressors. He said, Amber, have you ever been to a black church? Have you ever been to a black church? Have you noticed, Amber, that the black church does not appeal to logic? That courtroom is a church, Amber. Most of the jurors are black. The judge is black. The family is black. The mayor is black. The chief of police is black. The district attorney is black. Amber, you can't win this legally, Amber. The mayor is black. The chief of police is black. The DA is black. The judge is black. Most of the jury is black. Amber, you're not going to win this with a legal argument. That is a church. And if you want to win over the church, you must act like a pastor. And the way black pastors control their people is not through intelligence. They don't use intelligence in no church. They use emotion, Amber. Your weapon must be emotion. The minute you take the stand, start crying and it can't be tears. You have to boo hoo and say you sorry, Amber. Even though you've made racist comments about black people before, even though you supported the cops that killed Trayvon and Michael Brown and Philando Castile and Alton Sterling, even though you had no problem with that, you have to act like you're hurting for this. Black people function on emotion, Amber, not intelligence. The courtroom is a church. It's filled with Negroes. If you want to win, do what the preachers do and appeal to their emotions. If I'm lying, I'm dying. If I'm lying, I'm dying. If I'm lying, I'm dying. And then on top of that, Amber, on top of that, Amber, you must utter the two greatest words that a white person could ever say to a black person. If you say these two words, which is kind of like three words, there's three magical words that you have to utter. First of all, you have to appeal to their emotion. Activate the Willie Lynch chip, Amber. Appeal to their emotions. Activate the Willie Lynch chip, Amber. Appeal to their emotions. And then after you do that, after you appeal to the emotions and activate the Willie Lynch chip, after you appeal to their emotions and activate the Willie Lynch chip, okay? Once you have them all in their feelings because they have a natural predisposition to love us, Amber, because when they go to church, they see Jesus as us. Amber, you have to use this. When you go into a black church, you only you don't see no black Jesus. You see white people and Jesus looks like you, Amber. He looks just like you. You look like Jesus. Long blonde hair, white skin, 
blue eyes. You have to use the white Jesus symbolism, Amber, to set yourself free. You look like the Christ that they see in the black church Bible. You look like Jesus, Amber. Stop thinking like Amber and start thinking like the white Messiah. Who has been wronged? If you act like the white Messiah who has been wronged, then all of your followers will rush in to save you, Amber. Stop thinking about the law and start thinking about black religion. Stop thinking about the law, Amber, and start thinking about black religion. And he said, once you cry and you scream and you boo-hoo, once you cry and you scream and you boo-hoo, once you cry and you scream and you boo-hoo, you must utter the three most sacred words that a white person could ever say to a black person. And those three most sacred words is not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The three most sacred words that a white person could ever say to a black person are, I am sorry. I am sorry. Amber, do you know how much we've done to black folks and we've been able to erase it all with three words, Amber? I am sorry and look like you mean it, Amber. Now, we know that you text your white boyfriend right after you killed this black man. You text them right away so y'all can link up after the murder. After the murder, Amber, you still wanted to get bent over. After the murder, you still wanted to get bent over, Amber. We know that as soon as you killed this black man, you went right back to scheduling your freak on. As soon as you killed him, you went right back to scheduling your freak on. But we ain't going to bring that up. We're not going to bring that up. All you have to do is get them Negroes in their emotions and utter, I am sorry. That's all you have to do. Because the unconscious psyche of the Negro is filled with images of a weeping, wailing, white Jesus. The unconscious of the Negro is filled with images of a weeping, wailing, white Jesus. The unconscious of the Negro is fully indoctrinated with the images of a weeping, wailing, white Jesus. Deliverer, if you play the Jesus card, don't play the police card, don't play the legal card, don't play the I was temporarily dumb card, play the white Jesus card, Amber. And she played it, brothers and sisters. She played it, she played it, she played it. And she played it enough that her white hoodoo, not African voodoo, her white hoodoo, not African voodoo, her white hoodoo was enough. To get that brother to get up there and say, not only do I forgive you, not only do I feel for you, he said, I don't even want you to go to jail. I'm not attacking my brother. He's grieving. That's my brother. He's just a symbol. I'm using his example. I'm not attacking him because it ain't about them. It's about us. We the people are the problem, not John's brother. We the people are the problem, not those Negro jurors. We the people are the problem, not that black judge. So I'm just using this example. I'm not attacking none of them. They are family and we have to help them out. Because they suffer from something we all suffer from, post-traumatic slavery disease. They suffer from something that every Negro suffers from, post-traumatic slavery disease. I got to cut some air on. Give me one minute. I'm 
getting a little hot in here. I'm getting a little worked up. Ancestors is in here. Ashe. Pour a little libation for both of them. Both of them, John. Ashe, brother. Rest in peace. So. So. Not only does he said, I forgive you. He said, I don't want you to go to jail. He told this to a white. And then after he told the white cop that not only do I forgive you, not only do I not want you to go to jail, he turned to the judge and said, he turned to the judge and asked the judge, can I please go and hug her? And did you see what Amber did? Amber should get an Oscar. I'm somebody get me the phone number to the nominations board. For the Oscars, can somebody please post the phone number or email or website to the nominations committee at the Oscars? Because I want Amber Geiger to win the Best Actor Award. I want Amber Geiger to win Best Actor Honors. Can we get her an Oscar, an Emmy, a Golden Globe? What can we get her? She deserves an honor for what she did. Somebody call up the Oscars, call up the Emmys, call up the Golden Globe, call up the NAACP, call up BET. Somebody get somebody on the phone because Amber Geiger deserves a Best Actor Award. She deserves a Best Actor Award for the show she put on in that Dallas courtroom. She deserves Best Actor Award for the show she put on in that Dallas courtroom. And then the judge allows her. See, the judge should not have done that. That boy is traumatized. He's young. He's politically uneducated. You should have said that's not proper protocol. You can hug her outside in the hallway once today's proceedings are over. But that is not appropriate conduct for the courtroom. But the judge who has her own Willie Lynch chip activated and her own white Jesus symbology dictating her unconscious thoughts. Saw the same thing that John's bro Botham's brother saw. She saw the same thing. A weeping, wailing white Jesus in her courtroom. A weeping, wailing white Jesus in her courtroom. And she allowed the brother of the victim to go over and hug his brother's murderer. She allowed the young brother of the victim to, to be manipulated by his white Jesus indoctrination. To run over and hug his Lord and Savior. Do you know the biggest reason Amber only got 10 years and she's probably only going to serve five and I'm going to go on record. I'm going to make another prediction. I have never been wrong. I'm going to make another prediction. I have never been wrong. I'm going to make another prediction. I have never been wrong. I'm going to make another prediction. I have never been wrong with a prediction that I have made. I'm willing to bet you that the Dallas Police Department right now the Dallas Police Department right now, the Fraternal Order of Police and their attorneys, the Fraternal Order of Police and their attorneys at this very moment is plotting an appeal, a governor's pardon. I'm willing to bet you right now they are looking at this and they're saying, look at this. We have we have the judge on our side. We have the jury on our side and the brother said he don't even want her to go to jail. Can't we use this? Can't we somehow use this to get her sentence reduced even further? Is it possible we can get her pardoned? I'm telling you, this ain't over. Now, she can get out five years good behavior 
So she's not doing five regardless. Five years for taking the life of an innocent black man in his own house. She's not going to do more than five anyway. But I'm saying beyond the five. I'm saying beyond the five. After what? After the circus. After the circus that Negroes put on in that courtroom. After the circus that Negroes put on in that courtroom. I'm telling you that the Dallas Police Department, one of the most racist ones in all of America, and they're all racist. But I'm telling you right now that they are plotting and planning to jailbreak that girl out of custody. I'm telling you, I would be surprised if Amber Geiger does a day over three years. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if she does one year because Botham's brother will write a letter for her. The judge will write a letter for her and the Negroes on the jury will write a letter for her. Mm. Mm. They will write a letter to the judge for her. And they will get her out of jail. I'm telling you, white female privilege. White female privilege. White female privilege and white Jesus symbology. White female privilege and white Jesus symbology. White female privilege and white Jesus symbology ran that courtroom. It ran that courtroom. It ran that courtroom. Now. I want to metaphorically, I want to metaphorically get you to see something real quick. I want to metaphorically get you to see something real quick. I want y'all to stay with me. So we know Amber Geiger represents the white Jesus in the black psyche. We know that Amber Geiger physically represents the white Jesus in the black psyche. We know that, right? We know that for 400 years, Blonde hair, blue eyed savior for black people. We know that. But guess what? Who was the real Jesus in this case? Amber was the bootleg Jesus. Amber was the counterfeit Jesus. Amber was the genetically modified Jesus. But guess who the real Christ was? The real Christ in this case was Botham John himself. The real crucified savior. We don't know what that brother would have done with his life. We don't know what road he was on. The real crucified savior was the black man himself, Botham John. Stay with me. Stay with me. If Botham John was the real Christ, if Botham John was the real Christ, that means the judge was Pontius Pilate. That means the judge was Pontius Pilate. And as you know, Jesus the Christ had 12 disciples. And the 12 disciples in this case was the 12 mostly black jurors. Jesus, is, both of them John is the Christ. Both of them Christ. The judge was Pontius Pilate. And the 12 disciples were the 12 Jurors, mostly black. And like Jesus said in the Bible, one of you will betray me. But in Botham's case, in Botham's case, in Botham's case, in Botham's case, he wasn't betrayed by one disciple. He was betrayed by all 12. In Botham's case, he wasn't betrayed by one disciple. He was betrayed. By all 12. Both them John the black Christ was put on trial by a black judge serving in role of Pontius Pilate. He had 12 disciples whose job was to see to it that justice was served on his behalf. 12 disciples who were the 12 jurors who were supposed to determine that justice was served for the crucified both them John and those 12 disciples betrayed their savior for the devil. Those 12 disciples betrayed their savior for the devil. Those 12 disciples, the 12 jurors, the 12 disciples, the 12 jurors, the 12 disciples, the 12 jurors, the 12 disciples, the 12 jurors betrayed their Christ for the devil. 
Let's look at this politically for a minute. First of all, am I making sense to y'all? If I'm making sense to you, can I get a black fist from my brothers and a heart from my sisters? If I'm making sense to y'all, I need a black fist from my brothers and I want some hearts from my sisters. If I'm making sense to y'all, can I get some black fists from my brothers and some love from my sisters? If I'm making sense. If I'm making sense, where the black fits from the brothers and some love from the sisters, if I'm making sense to y'all. Thank you, family. Thank you, family. Thank you, family. Let's look at this politically. The Trayvon Martin crucifixion was met with black protests. Michael Brown crucifixion was met with a black revolt. Freddie Gray's crucifixion was met with a black revolt. Walter Scott's crucifixion was met with black protests. Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, black protests. Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, Laquan McDonald, and so many more was met with black revolt or black protests. In most of those cases, the killers were white males. In most of those cases, the killers were white males. In most of those cases, the killers were white males. Amber Geiger just changed the game. Amber Geiger just changed the game. She just gave white supremacy a new strategy of extermination of the black male. Amber Geiger just gave white supremacy a new strategy for the extermination of the black male. And guess what the new strategy is? See, I'm a political scientist. I am a master political scientist. This is why we need the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. This is why we need the Honorable Marcus Garvey Building fully restored. This is why we need the Honorable Frederick Douglass School Building fully restored. This is why we need the Nat Turner Jean Jacques Dessaline Community Center fully restored. This is why we need the Patrice Lumumba Bishop Turner. Pan-African Library truly restored because this is the wisdom that we need. This is the wisdom that we need. This is the wisdom that we need. Amber Geiger has changed the game on police genocide. She will go down in history as one of the greatest police in American history because she walked into a courtroom, evoked white Jesus symbolism, white female pillage, and got the victims to become her defenders. I said she walked into a courtroom, evoked white Jesus symbolism, black religious dysfunctional behavior, and she got the victims to become her defenders. Have you ever seen this before? Amber Geiger will go down on the Mount Rushmore of police. She walked into a courtroom, put on a Hollywood act, and she got the victims to become her defenders. So guess what they're going to do now? White racism in the white police and Donald Trump and the FBI and the CIA and the National Security Agency are saying, wait a minute. Do y'all see what I see? Do you see what I see? Why didn't we think of this before? Do you see what I see? Why didn't we think of this before? Do you see what I see? Why didn't we think of this? Do y'all notice that when the white male kills the black male, black people go crazy. When the white male kills, excuse me, when the, yes, when the white male kills the black male, the black community goes crazy when the white male does it. But when the white female does it, we get a totally different reaction 
Why didn't we think of this before? The white female has historically been viewed as the innocent mother virgin Mary. The white female has historically been viewed as the innocent virgin mother Mary. Why didn't we think of this before? The white woman can't do no harm. The white woman can't do no harm. The white do you realize that most educated black men are breaking in next to get a white girl? Do you realize black women spend most of their disposable income trying to look like Amber Geiger? Why didn't we think of this before? Why didn't we think of this before? So all we have to do then, all we have to do then, all we have to do then is let the white woman do the killing and the black woman do the convicting. Let the white woman carry out the murder and let a black woman carry out the trial. Let the white cop, the white female exterminate the black males and then put the black woman in charge of her case because we know how many of them feel about the black male too. In fact, in fact, in fact, the black woman's opinion of the black man for many sisters, not all, the black woman's opinion of the black man for many sisters, not all. The black woman's opinion of the black man isn't too much different than the white woman's opinion of the black male. So we're going to invoke the energy of feminism. We're going to evoke the energy of feminism. We're going to evoke the energy of feminism. And through that, through the unity, the feminist unity of the white woman and the black woman, we can exterminate black males and we don't have to worry about no riots. We ain't got to worry about no revolts. We ain't got to worry about no protest marches because the number one most important person in the psyche of the Negro is the innocent white Virgin Mary female. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Don't worry. Breakfast Club interview four coming up. Breakfast Club interview four coming up. Charlemagne, get me the date. Charlemagne, Envy, Angie, get me the date. Breakfast Club interview number four. Charlemagne, I need that date. I want y'all to tag Charlemagne, tag Envy, tag Angie. Tell them when is Dr. Umar coming back to the Breakfast Club? Y'all missed them summer of 19. Y'all missed them summer of 18. The last time was summer of 17. We need the prince back on the premier platform. We need the prince back on the, the premier platform. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. My prediction, and it's a damn shame that this happened during the quadricentennial. It's a damn shame this happened on Nat Turner's birthday. This happened on the Honorable Prophet General Reverend, the Honorable Prophet General Reverend Nat Turner's birthday. This is how we celebrate the 219th solar return of the greatest black revolutionary to ever walk on American soil. This is how we honor him. Amber Geiger will go down in history as one of the greatest police ever because she walked into a courtroom, put on a show, the best Hollywood acting performance I have seen in my life. And she got the victims to become her defenders. And she, in the process, has given white racist America a new strategy 
to exterminate black people. Stop letting the white male cops kill them. Let the white females kill them. Stop letting the white male cops kill them. Let the white female cops kill them. And when they go to court, put a black woman in charge of the trial. And when they go to court, put a black woman in charge of the trial. Let me ask y'all a question. Let me ask y'all a question. Let me ask y'all a question. Had the judge been a strong black male? Had the judge been a strong black male? Had the judge been a strong black male? We working on BET right now, my brother. Zeus, we working on BET. Oh, we working on BET. We trying to get a Dr. Umar show on BET. They scared, but we working on them. We working on BET, that's right. I'm just letting y'all know some of the things we working on. We working on a Dr. Umar show on BET where we gonna deal with real black issues, real black guests, unapologetically African family first, the Dr. Umar show on BET. Hit up BET, hit them on up. We know they white owned now, Viacom, bought it for two billion from Bob Johnson and Y2K. We know that. Hit up BET and say we need that Dr. Umar talk show. But let's, let me not digress. Let me not digress. Had the judge been a strong, unapologetically African black male? Had the judge been a strong, unapologetically African black male? Do you think he would have let his brother go hug her? Do you think a strong black male judge would have let that young brother get up and go hug that killer? Do you think so? Do you think a strong black male would have got up from his bench as judge? got up from his bench as judge, went down and go hug his Lord and Savior, Amber Geiger Christ. Do you really think he would have done that? Of course not. So they had to put a black female in charge of the case. The black female, I'm not, I'm not attacking her. She's a symbol. I'm talking about the black female. As a consciousness, they had to put a bougie black female in charge of the case because a black male would have led to a different outcome. Why do you think they put a black woman in charge of a white woman's trial? Do you think that was an accident? Do you? Why did they put a black woman in charge of a white female's trial? Do you think that was an accident? This is chess. It's not checkers. Leave your emotions at the door. This is chess. It's not checkers. Leave your emotions at the door. This is chess. It's not checkers. Leave your emotions at the door. That judge also made history. That judge also made history. I'm a political science major. I'm a political science major. I'm not aware of any criminal case in history. I'm not aware of any criminal case in history where the judge left their bench and went down to the floor to hug the convicted criminal. I've never heard of a judge leaving their bench to go and hug a convicted murderer in their courtroom. Does anyone know? Does anyone know? Have you ever heard of a case in the annals of American or British jurisprudence where a judge left their bench after the criminal has been convicted a murderer? A assassin and go down and hug the assassin in the courtroom in front of the victim's family. I've never heard of it. I've never heard of it. I've never seen it. I've never heard of it. Could you imagine? Let's go back to the 1990s. Let's go back to the 1990s. After OJ was acquitted. Having gone through this laborious trial, 
did Judge Ito come down from his bench and hug O.J. Simpson after his acquittal? Did Judge Ito get up and go down and hug 